right, the first case we're going to hear is Mulyani v. Holder and Mr. Fogel. You're ready. May it please the Court. My name is H. Glenn Fogel, Jr. I represent the petitioner, Yanni Mulyani, in this case. I'd like to begin. This case is about a clear legal error and abdication of duty on the part of the Board of Immigration Appeals and the immigration judge. I'd like to begin with a quote from this Court that issued a case this year. The case is I.U. at Chen v. Holder. It's 742 F. 3rd, 171. In that case, this Court quoted Judge Posner from the Seventh Circuit stating, the BIA should avoid treating country reports as holy writ, immune to contradiction. And then further stated, although our job as reviewing the Court is not to reweigh the evidence, we must ensure that unrebutted legally significant evidence is not arbitrarily ignored by the fact finder and that the agency does not base its decision on only isolated snippets of the record while disregarding the rest of the case. That's what happened here, Your Honor. What was disregarded? There's a multitude of evidence. If I brought it up here and you have it. Would you like to get some water, perhaps? Why don't you take this glass? It's freshly poured right here. Oh, you got it? Okay. There's a multitude of evidence in the record. The record's over 1,000 pages long. Initially, when the application for asylum was submitted, there was a ton of evidence submitted with that, including the country reports, U.S. country reports for 2000 and 2001, which talk about the time, around the time when the petitioner here was persecuted. She was persecuted in the 1990s. The judge here. The 2000 report, the country report, was relevant for that, isn't it? It is, because what happened, it talked about all the events that were going on and the religious persecution that was going on in Indonesia at the time. Yeah, and you need to read it with a little bit of circumspection. I mean, Indonesia has been a country that has had difficulty in its religious situation, and as a policy matter, they're trying to improve, and the difference shows, the 2008 report shows a better situation. But most of the problems were in the eastern part of Indonesia, weren't they? At the time, but not the whole. I mean, it was really pervasive. I'm talking as a general matter. You're reading these reports, and you're trying to find out whether this woman was the victim of state persecution or state-sponsored or state-tolerated persecution as opposed to private attacks by Muslim gangs. And she did suffer some ill treatment. The question is, where is the evidence that the state stood by? And as a matter of fact, one of the incidents, apparently the attack broke off when the sirens were heard and the police were coming. So there's some indication that these were outlaws and not the state itself. And I think the factual finding in this case was that there's not enough evidence to support that the state was behind these or tolerated it. Well, the state doesn't have to be behind that. It has to just be a group that the government is unwilling or unable to control. Basically tolerated, standing by. Well, unwilling or unable to control. So what evidence is there that they were unwilling or unable to control it? Well, the whole evidence, I mean, this is a country of about 90 percent Muslim. And the evidence in the record, there's plenty of evidence in the record that clearly indicates that there was ongoing persecution of Christians. Did she ever report any of the instances to appropriate authorities and be turned away? No, she didn't because she was afraid to. Or she thought she was afraid to. She didn't think that it was going to 
going to do any good. And our own, our own State Department report actually supports that. The 2000 State Department report um, actually supports that. And I can, I can point the court to that. Um, I, I do, I understand the concern. That it makes for a difficult argument, though, to say, at least with respect to relief under the Convention Against Torture, um, that um, she would be more likely to be tortured under official acquiescence or instigation if she never reported any of the instances of ill treatment to the authorities. That's correct. But what she had was was what what, what we're talking about. What I'm I'm mainly my my main argument here is the is the past persecution. The immigration judge found this was past persecution. Then but he then he said, oh well, she didn't. Uh, she didn't show that the government was unwilling or unable to protect her based on this 2008 country report 10 years later. Um, again, w without going through mul multitudes, I mean, that there's, there's, all, there's <clears throat> all kinds of articles from, you know, from the, the, the talk about, you know, all the churches, I mean, 500 and something churches that, were, that have been destroyed in, in, the, in, a, in the past couple of decades. Um, the, 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 uh, Continual persecution, or and, and even state, um, basically acquiesced or supported persecution of uh, of Christians, and I'm, you're, you're I'm not going to disagree. Um, I'm not going to say that it hasn't gotten better since, since 19, you know, 2008. There, it still exists, but it's, it's not as, as prevalent. But at the time that she was persecuted, which which you need to look at, if she was a victim of past persecution, there's a there's the uh, <coughs> There's a presumption that there's a well-founded fear of future persecution, which the government has to rebut, and and there is no discussion about any of that, at all, other than the judge said, well, she was past persecuted, but, but I, I, uh, I find that she's, you know, she didn't find that the, the government of Indonesia is unwilling or is not unwilling or unable to protect her, based on you know one line of a country report in, in uh, 2008. The for us uh, accepting your argument that uh, the government uh, did uh, basically stand by, was unable or uh, refused to, uh, is really a, uh, it's a factual finding. And uh, uh, we have to find that the record compels, compels a finding in your favor. Uh, otherwise, we defer to the agency, don't we? Um. <coughs> That is correct, Your Honor, and I, I would say that it does. Here, I mean, it, it clearly does because what the what the what, what the immigration judge and the BIA they're, what their duty is, they have to examine the whole record. They can't take, you know, one line out of a 2008 country report, which is again, I, I think it's disingenuous to, to use that to say that there was the government wasn't going to was unwilling or unable to help her back in, in the 1990s. I, I'll just read from the, the you know the 2000 country report. Uh, which is administrative, it's at the administrative record 817, but it has the following things to say about, and, and this is where I say the record does com compel, this is even from our State Department report, not the, you know, not the 50 plus articles from, from various, uh, you know, from various reputable news organizations that, that, that describe the uh, religious persecution in, <clears throat> in Indonesia. But, you know, it talked about the thousands of persecution of Christians in Malacca were first to convert to Islam, Attacks against houses of worship continued, <clears throat> and the lack of an effective governmental response to punish perpetrators and prevent further attacks led to allegations of official complicity in some of the incidents. Um, the, the government, and this is our country report, the government was ineffective in deterring social, inter-ethnic, and inter-religious violence that accounted for a majority of deaths by violence during the year. And, um, and then that's at um, Administrative Record 819. Closures and the closures and attacks on churches, temples, and other religious facilities increased during the year, according to the Indonesian Christian Communications Forum. The ICC recorded 122 religiously motivated attacks on Christian churches or other facilities in the year. Then it goes on to say the government failed to suppress or respond to most cases of violence and that did not and did not fully resolve many of the cases of attacks on religious facilities and churches that occurred during riots, and in other cases the government did not investigate such incidences at all. That's an administrative record, 845. That's our own State Department report, which is a very general summary and, and does obviously doesn't include um, many, many things. But the record has been supplemented by, 
many, many articles. I mean, there's, this, it's not, uh, it's not a, uh, is there any a secret. Is there any evidence in that report that indicates that it was the government policy to have free religions and to uh, have multiple religions within the country? And, uh, to well, that's, in, that's in the Constitution. I mean, of Phil, course. I'm just talking about yeah. in the report. Yes, in the Constitution, that, that's what the report says. But in, and, in actual practice, for the government to be able to, not, not only that, they can say that they, they, support, uh, they support the freedom of religion and tolerance, and, and, which, and I believe the president at the time was actually you know, trying to do that. But that doesn't mean doesn't, that. Isn't that uh, uh, pretty uh, uh, difficult to overcome if it's a government policy and he was trying to do it uh, uh, and uh, took steps to do it? Uh, sure, they're going to be, uh, there, has been, there have been problems there, but. Uh, does it compel a finding that uh, uh, her situation was uh, basically government action? And again, Your Honor, I don't think we're saying that, that it's, it's government actions. It's government. It's got to be. Uh, and, and, and it's got to be persecution by a government. The standard is uh, whether the government basically tolerated it or did and it. it and it is tolerated, right? right. It, and I, I would say that it's 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 tolerated, Your Honor. The, the, <clears throat> one one incident that Judge. Niemeyer, I believe, referred to, is um, Giuliani's own testimony that an abusive group dispersed as soon as it heard a police siren, which at least seems to suggest that there was fear of it, or at least reaction to um, the threat of law enforcement. And the Department of State report, or Department of State report from 2010 does indicate attempts by the government to prosecute um, the perpetrators of um, religious-based abuse. Not with complete success, but at least attempts to do so. <coughs> I'm, yes, sir, I'm not, not saying that there's no police there, okay? But th th there are, but that, doesn't, that does not mean that, that, they're, that they're able to control it. And, and, they, and I, I, w I would say, at the, at the time, the, the country reports and, and the articles submitted that show, you know, hundreds and, you know, thousands of people killed and, and, and uh, you know, Christians killed by, uh, by Muslims, hundreds of ch churches bombed, you know, hundreds of uh, churches attacked, um, mobs attacking, attacking Christians, uh, Muslim mobs attacking Christians. That doesn't okay. The, the, that doesn't mean that the government doesn't uh, supports that. But I mean, but but they're complicit with it because they they can't. They're, they're unable to being unable to actually control them is another thing. It doesn't. You you can say, oh, I would like to. You know, the government can say, well, we we would like to have freedom of religion. But the actual fact is, on the ground, they're not doing that. And I think that's what the that, that's what the. The country, our our country report says that they are ineffective. They're, com they're completely in ineffective and, and and did not follow up or investigate these incidents of religious violence. Um, and that's just that's just the country report. I mean, there there's you know there's many 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 articles that that, that are submitted that are in the record about all the churches being closed. If the government is supporting uh, freedom of religion, how how come? 500 churches are, are closed in a decade. I mean, it's, it's, and, and these, you know, Muslim attacks are, are allowed, are allowed, these um, Muslim groups are allowed to go to islands and, and, and start a holy war with, with, you know, with the government standing by. <clears throat> I, I think the, the, uh, so I think the, the key here, and, and the, the first thing I, I really want to, wanted to point out is that, is that, is that they, the um, the record the, the record was not you know was not fully reviewed here the, the, the uh, most much of the evidence in the record has been ignored and that you, you can't use something that ha you can't use a country report from 2008 to say that things that happened during the 1990s uh, <laughs> that the, the things that happened during the 1990s show that the uh, <clears throat> the government was unwilling or unable to you know, is now willing and able to protect, you know, to, to protect uh, Christians. And, uh, un, you know, it's an unfortunate situation, but that's, you know, that's the fact. And the, but the, 
the main point is that they have to review the whole record. They have to consider the whole record, and that's, that wasn't done here. And past persecution was found here, and there's a, pres there's a presumption of a well-founded fear of future persecution, and, and that was completely overlooked. I think I'm okay, time here. thank you. You do have some rebuttal, All right. uh, Mr. Kelch. Good morning. May it please the court, my name is Greg Kelch and I represent the Attorney General. The term persecution requires a showing of harm either by the government or forces that the government is unable or unwilling to control. And in this case, Ms. Mulyani did not report any of the mistreatment she experienced in Indonesia to the police, including, as the court noted, the events that occurred during a 1998 riot when the police did mobilize and Ms. Mulyani testified that her attackers ran away when they heard the sirens. Looking at the background documents in this case, they show that there is a constitutional right to freedom of religion in Indonesia, that the government generally respects those rights, and that Catholicism and Protestantism are two of the officially recognized churches in Indonesia. So because Ms. Mulyani has not demonstrated an unwilling, that the government is unwilling to protect her, it follows that she hasn't demonstrated a fear of persecution and therefore, she is not properly considered a refugee under the Immigration Act. Ms. Uh, uh, Mr. Fogel notes to the court uh, this morning that there, that there is evidence in the background documents about violence against churches in Indonesia. And I do want to point out to the court that there does appear to be some controversy in Indonesia about the building of Christian churches. Uh, Muslim communities concerned about how many are being built, are they being built in our neighborhoods, However, I would remind the court that Ms. Mulyani testified that she does not attend church. She worships at home. And that's on pages 193 and 275 of the record. So therefore, and all of the events that she d discussed happening to her in the past in Indonesia were not at her church. These were events that happened while she was a student and again during a riot in 1998. I do want to make clear that, Mr., uh, that Ms. Mulyani argues in her opening brief, brief that perhaps the immigration judge found her to be per se ineligible for asylum because she did not go to, to the police. And that's not what happened in this case. The immigration judge makes clear that he was looking at the background documents and all of the evidence of the record. Now the burden of proof in the case was on Ms. Mulyani. She, she testified to incidents that occurred in 1991 and in 1993 and two had occurred in 1998. She did not provide country reports for those years. The closest that we have are the 2000 and 2001 country reports that were attached to her asylum application. That was the one that was filed on her behalf by an immigration consultant without her knowledge. The immigration judge, in looking at the case, he cited to the 2008 International Religious Freedom Report, presumably because that's the report that she provided in immigration court. So he was signaling to the parties that he did review, in particular, that report that she seemed to find important enough to submit during the hearing and recognize the adverse evidence that was in it, but made a, made a factual determination that, that the evidence of record does not demonstrate that the government is unable or unwilling to, uh, to, uh, to protect her. And that is a factual determination that this court must defer to unless it is compelled to conclude otherwise. If there are no further questions, I will conclude by, by saying again that the court should affirm or uh, just deny the petition for review. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Fogel? As a, as a matter of rebuttal, it's not just churches that were attacked and the, and the evidence in the record does not just show that churches were attacked. That's, that was, that's one of the things that, that happened. Thousands of, thousands of Christians were killed. Um, the mob, particularly during the, um, 1998, uh, mobs of, of, uh, of Muslims would 
you know, in, in, in Jakarta and, and, the, and the other major city centers. Does the record show that those 1998 riots were the government attempted to put them down? Yes, the government did, did attempt to put them down. But that doesn't mean that they're able to control it. In fact, that, that was, I think that's what our country report says, that, they're, that they, they allowed a lot of that when there was large groups of people that they just, well, just they let it happen. If they attempted to put them down, when they're notified, they come and attempt to put them down, and we don't hear the result of whether they were successful. We do know that she reported that the fact that the crowd about her uh, dissipated mm -hmm. when the effort was made. <clears throat> That that's true, but it's it, again, it, she was she was. That doesn't mean that, that they could ultimately control it, because what would happen? Well, we I mean, there's only so many police that it, it, it I just. Understand, uh, but it, they controlled it with respect to her. The crowd, the uh, the crowd that was about her and was uh, uh, attacking her and her locus uh, dissipated when they heard the sirens, and the government was making its effort. Uh, well, we don't even know. I mean, again, we don't actually know that the government was, was trying to protect her she individually. Has on this, but that's indicative of something, isn't it? It's, it's hard to conclude that if there's a riot and she's affected by the riot adversely and the sirens go uh, uh, and the crowd then runs and dissipates, that uh, that is uh, government action. It is government action, but it did not prevent the harm that happened to her, and it did not prevent the, the what, what the immigration judge found Standard to be cumulative persecution. The, the, peace. the question is whether the persecution she suffered was at the instance of the state's unwillingness uh, or inability to control or its own participation, and uh, all suggesting that it's state action. But the whole effort here is to find out whether she's being persecuted by the state and not by riots or gangs. Uh, and the state is implicated if it's unwilling to basically stand by, unwilling or unable to control it. Well, well religious, that, the problem is that religious persecution was, was allowed by the state. And that's, I think that's what our country reports say. In this particular incident, they may have, she may have, you know, may have saved her life that, that, that they, they ran away. But, the, the, the other I think p part of the problem is the sources that you cite to us do not say that the government that religious persecution was allowed by the state to, and the state was unable to control but did attempt to control it um, uh, as best it could but if you were to prevail on the if you, we were to grant the petition for review on the asylum claim couldn't the BIA on remand just find that it was untimely because it it, uh, it accepted it didn't it didn't um, review the the IJ's finding that the petition for asylum was untimely because it was filed past the one year deadline. No, well, they still have to, to review the whole record. If there's past persecution, there's a well-founded fear of future persecution. And I'm I'm and saying that if we granted your petition for review and it went back, mm -hmm. they still have the availability of untimeliness arguably to dispose of the at least the asylum claim because well, right. that that was also an IJ finding um, that's correct and they could do that but then there's the there's a withholding claim and and our, our whole argument here is, is is all along immigration judge found past persecution she's she's entitled to presumption of future persecution that the government has the burden of, of disproving and that, I mean of, of, of rebutting and that's that that's where I, when without a look at the whole record here and without you know showing that they've properly looked and considered the whole record and found that you know, and found that we they, that she didn't meet her burden then then I think it has to be is it isn't back. the burden of proving a withholding claim higher than the burden of proving an asylum claim it is, but when there's past persecution, there's is, there's a presumption of a well-founded fear of future persecution, which is that that's what you know that's what we, the, uh, the immigration judge found, and he believed her as well. So he he, you know, he found her credible, so he had to, to uh, <coughs> he has to take into account that that, that her, her her going to the police wouldn't have done wouldn't have done any good, and I, and our country reports 
states that the women, as the 2000 country report states that when it talks about women reporting right, that they're afraid to go to the police because the police don't do anything. Okay. Um, let's see your red lights on. All right. uh, we'll come down and greet counsel and then uh, proceed on to our next case.